Welcome to this series of hands-on tutorials from the SAP HANA Academy. I'm Philip Muggleston. In this series, we're covering DevOps for SAP Business Technology Platform Extension Applications. In this video tutorial, we're going to get started by building out our developer environment. We're going to set up a developer sub-account and the right set of services within the Business Technology Platform. What we're also going to do is set up our application. So effectively, we're going to set up Business Application Studio so that we can write the code. We're going to work with GitHub, so we'll configure that, etc. So I'm here in the BTP cockpit. Uh, we've seen this in the previous video tutorial. We've got all the necessary service assignments, the entitlements needed so that we can uh, do what we want to do. There are no sub accounts, so I'm going to start by creating one. This will be about developer sub account. Now I'm going to give it a name. Now the name will need to be pretty much unique. The subdomain has to be unique in the data center. Now I'm actually, I know that DPE uh, dev is going to be unique. Uh, I'm going to use as a best practice. I'm not going to use this automatic uh, uniqueness that it adds for you after this can really make it more complicated to work with. Just make sure that your subdomain value is going to be unique. In terms of my region, well, I'm going to use uh, Europe Frankfurt, so EU 10, and we can go ahead now and create that sub account. Now, once the onboarding has finished, we can then open the tile. In fact, if we look at our sub account, remember the subdomain we set as DPE dev. Now, we're going to be using the Cloud Foundry runtime, so we need to enable Cloud Foundry. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Enable Cloud Foundry. Now, it's going to ask us which plan. You can use the free plan if you've got it. I'm going to use the standard plan for a productive environment. I'm going to give the instance name basically the same as the sub-account name. And the org name, again, it's the same as the subdomain name, which is also the name of our sub-account DPE dev. Makes it a lot simpler if you keep these things the same, particularly the org name and the sub-account name of the sub-account. So let's go ahead and hit Create. Now we're going to want to have a space. Now it's possible to have multiple spaces within a sub-account, but to be honest, the real, the best practice when you're working, particularly with DevOps scenarios, is you want to have one space per sub-account. You want to have a specific sub-account for each scenario, such as Dev QA. So we're going to create a space. You can call it what you want, but just to keep things really simple, I'm going to call this one Dev. We're going to have a convention. When we come to do uh, QA and Prod, we'll maybe call it DPE QA with a space called QA and DPE Prod with a uh, space called Prod. That will be very consistent, make it easier for us to work with later. So let's hit Create. Now what we need to do are set up the entitlements for this specific sub-account. So we can go to the Entitlements section and choose Configure Entitlements. Now you get some kind of automatically uh, when you create a sub-account, but we need to make sure we've got some specific ones configured. Specifically, we'll need to make sure we've got the Cloud Foundry runtime. So we'll still lose that because well, we're going to want to deploy applications and they need application runtime memory. We're going to use Business Application Studio in terms of developing our application. You don't have to, but that's what we're going to do in this scenario. So I'm going to select that plan as well. And we're also going to use our development uh, environment. You don't have to, but we will in this case. It's simpler to set up our delivery, continuous integration delivery, our cloud transport management, the alerts, and the uh, automation pilot. So I actually can set those entitlements right now up front. So let's go and set up continuous integration and delivery. And we're going to choose the default application plan so we can subscribe to it. And then we'll want the cloud transport management service. And there we'll need to subscribe to the application and also the standard plan so we can have a service instance. We're going to want the alert notifications. So we're going to subscribe to the available plan we have for that. If you're working with a free uh, tier or you're working in the trial, then you won't necessarily have the same amount of uh, usage that you can see here because this is for a, a fully fledged production uh, environment. And finally, we'll want to have automation pilot. Again, we want the application because we're going to subscribe to it. Now, our application also includes HANA. So I'm going to make sure that I've also got HANA available in my dev environment. So HANA Cloud. So I want the HANA plan. I'm not going to worry about a data lake or anything at this point. And I'm going to want HDI shared so that I can build HDI containers as part of my app that will then work in that HANA Cloud instance. So once I've done that, I can choose to add the nine service plans. Now, just to be careful, for the Cloud Foundry runtime, this is the point where you say how much of it you want. And I'm going to choose to have actually four units, so four gigabytes of memory. That should be enough for what we're going to do in our development environment. 
and now I should be able to hit save. Now once my entitlements have been saved, I can go ahead and look at my services. I'll go to instances and subscriptions. Now as it stands, it's clean, it's empty because we've just created this sub account, but I'm going to subscribe. So I'll choose the create button to Business Application Studio. So let's choose the service, so Business Application Studio. Again, choose your plan. In this case, I'm using the uh, regular standard edition and I'm going to hit create. Now once the subscription has been done, it's also created some roles that you'll need to actually use the application to use the UI of Business Application Studio. So I need to make sure those are assigned to my uh, developer user. So what I can do is go to the security section and choose users. And this is the user I've created the sub account with. That's the one I'm going to use for my uh, initial development. So I'm going to select that user. Of course, you can add in additional users here. And then I'm going to configure the role. So role collections. So we'll choose assign role collection. And I want to pick the business application studio ones. Of course, pick whichever ones are relevant for the usage you want to make available to that user. And we'll assign role collection. Now that I've done that, I should be able to go back to my instances and subscriptions. And then you'll see that we've got the application and on the right of it, you can see there's a little icon to go to the application. So I'm going to select that and it's going to fire up Business Application Studio. Now, before we actually do anything there, there's something else I want to do to save us a little bit of time. Because HANA is part of our scenario, it makes sense that we actually create our HANA Cloud instance. Now, we don't do that at the overall sub account level. We need to do that within a Cloud Foundry runtime space. Let's choose Cloud Foundry and Spaces. We've got our dev space, so select that. And now we'll see that we've got a HANA Cloud section. So let's select it and we can choose Create. So we'll create a HANA database or an instance of HANA Cloud. We need to confirm our user for this. And it's going to be a HANA Cloud HANA database. Let's choose Next. Make sure that the organization space is what you want. It should be set by default. Give it a name, I'll call it HANA. And you'll need to set your DB admin super user password. Then we can make other changes or other configurations in terms of it. We can optimize the memory. I'll stick with the defaults. We can set availability zones. We can choose additional features, etc. But I'm going to review and create. And finally, choose create instance. Now it's going to take a few minutes for this HANA Cloud instance to be instantiated. So we can now continue doing other stuff in the meantime. Now there's one other thing that we need to just look at before we go ahead and actually start uh, creating our application with Business Application Studio. We're going to work with a source control management system. And I've said previously we're going to be using GitHub for that. So we're going to need to make sure that we've got a GitHub account. In fact, if I go to GitHub, we'll see that I'm logged in the user. So I'm going to create a repository in here shortly. So what we've seen in this video tutorial is how we can actually set the assignments, set the service assignments or entitlements for all the different services we're going to actually be using. Once we've created a sub account, in this case, it's our dev sub account. We've also created an instance of HANA Cloud. We've actually subscribed and configured the security for uh, Business Application Studio. And we've checked that we've got access to GitHub as that's what we've chosen to use for our source control management for this project. In the next video tutorial, we'll now continue this by going ahead and actually uh, setting up some of the code, building out the application. You can find more video tutorials on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to be informed as soon as new video tutorials are published, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching.